In the previous video, I talked to you about how transcription worked. And in this video, I want to give you a little bit more detail on the middle part of transcription, which is the elongation of the messenger RNA. Now, what we've said already is that when, um, when you have a DNA strand, it's double-stranded. And I'm just going to draw these as two parallel lines, but in reality, of course, they are helical. Uh, but one of these will run from 5' prime to 3', prime, and the other one, because it's anti-parallel, will run 3' prime to 5'. Prime. Now, what we want is to take the DNA sequence and to transcribe it somehow into a messenger RNA sequence. And specifically, the messenger RNA sequence must can reflect the information that's to be found in the DNA sequence. Specifically then, we've got a start codon in the gene. It would be the ATG. Next, there'll be a second codon. Let's just say this is TTT, -T, which encodes phenylalanine, and so on. The nucleotides go down along the gene. Now, we want a messenger RNA that somehow has a reflected sequence of the DNA. So it will be a UG, U, 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 and so on. The point I'm trying to make here is that we cannot use this particular strand as the template to make the RNA strand. Instead, we've got to use the antisense strand or sometimes this is called the template strand. And this is the sense strand. Now, if we move down here and we show perhaps the RNA polymerase in action, again, we're just going to use a cartoon diagram. And this is here, we've got the DNA strand running five prime to three prime. This is a transcription bubble. We show the second strand here, the transcription bubble here. And we just depict the RNA polymerase here, very, very large macromolecule made up of a bunch of different proteins, four subunits. And it has opened up this transcription bubble, which is exposes the nucleotides in here. And we make this new uh, messenger RNA strand with reference to the antisense strand. So the RNA polymerase is making new messenger RNA and it knows which nucleotide to incorporate because of the base pairing interactions between the RNA and the DNA. And it makes the new strand from a five prime to a three prime direction because the only end you can add new nucleotides onto, this is the only way the chemistry works, is to add new nucleotides onto the growing three prime end of the messenger RNA. And this is why we must use the antisense strand which runs from a three prime to a five prime direction in order to produce an RNA strand that can run in the opposite way from a five prime to a three prime direction. The RNA polymerase continues in this way until it reaches some kind of terminator. And we've talked about rho independent. and rho dependent. And I've got some more details on that in the other in the other video.